School of Knock, week two. Before we get into this week's assignment, I want to give you a little bit of a recap for week one, the power of four. My week started off pretty rough. I struggled, if I'm honest, with my third and fourth arrow, which is what I expected. I didn't shoot up to my standards, certainly at the beginning of the week. After a few days, I definitely felt sore. I felt tired. And by the end of the week, I was feeling really good and I was seeing my progress. One of the things that I focused on the most was finishing strong and I was adamant about making sure that fourth arrow was a good quality shot. And several times I had to let down, draw back again in order to make that shot happen. And I think that is a perfect thing that you should continue to work on is making sure that you push yourself one or two arrows further than what you need to be at so that you're able to have that stamina built up in the tank in case you are ever letting down and having to redraw. Now I personally do most of my shooting at 20 yards indoors during this time of the year so my homework was done at that distance. Now, if you don't have that distance, certainly don't worry about it. By looking at a lot of your posts, some people were just shooting close range training, which is a perfectly fine place to be. Don't worry about that. Remember, week one was just about getting loose, getting the soreness out, and starting to get a little bit of gas back in that tank. Now I'm going to want you to continue to build on each week's homework. We started out last week by just getting you used to the repetition and a lot of you out there realized really quick what one extra arrow could do for you or even shooting up to 40 arrows at one time. Now as we move forward, I am going to now start building on structure. Structure is going to be your foundation and your basis to your good form, which I'm hopefully going to have all of you in uh, here in a few weeks. So this week's homework is going to be based around our foundation, based around our stance, because our stance is going to be the start of our entire form posture and positioning. The stance determines a lot more than what people get of credit for. There's times where people might hit their arm on one shot versus another shot. And without knowing it, people don't recognize that your stance can easily be that determining factor. So this week, what I want you to do is pay attention to your base your foundation, the start of your entire shot sequence, your stance. Now, in order to tell you what you're looking for, I want to describe to you three main stances with archery. The first stance over here is going to be an open stance, meaning your front foot is open to the target. If you were to look down at my feet right now, they would look just like this here. My rear foot might be parallel. My front foot is opening up towards the target. If I look down at my front foot, it might be pointing towards one o'clock if I was looking down range. But in doing so, I'm opening up my pelvis. I'm also opening up my shoulders and my chest more towards the target. Now the importance of this is what you're doing with your feet is also going to directly determine the direction of your hips. And essentially your hips are going to determine the position of your front shoulders or your shoulders in general. So as I'm shooting with an open stance like this and I would raise my bow to the target, you'll notice that this front shoulder is creating a very big triangle and more importantly 
my rear arm when I would be at full draw is going to be pointing back towards 10 o'clock if I was looking back behind me. In this stance here, this triangle is very open and this is gonna have some downsides to it. So if we were looking here and we're looking at our shoulders are ultimately over the top of our feet. When we look at this stance, we're looking at this front arm having to go to the target and this back arm back here is gonna be more or less in a large triangle like that. And this isn't gonna be ideal. It's gonna be difficult to pull through. You're gonna find that as you try to pull through your shot, your follow through is gonna to start to wanna to come out. And just from an anatomy point of view, this is gonna be a very difficult uh, process of executing a dynamic shot or a pull through shot when this elbow is not pointing the correct direction. Now another stance is gonna be directly opposite of that, which is a closed stance. So if you looked down at your feet and you notice that your front foot is ahead of the rear foot, then the opposite's gonna be true. Instead of your shoulders being open to the target, now you're closing your shoulders off to the target and you're in a way starting to turn your back towards the range down at about 10 o'clock if you were looking down range. In a closed stance like this, your triangle is now completely closed off. It's essentially shut. So instead of you having clearance here with your front bow arm, you've now closed this stance, brought this shoulder into the path of the string, and you've also brought your arm into the path of the string. So if you're an archer that sometimes hit your arm for no reason that you know of, it could be just as simple as not paying attention to your feet and actually having a closed stance. For example, if you're talking to someone behind you and then you're not looking at your feet and then you go to shoot your arrow and you just draw across your body, well now your closed stance, your shoulder has now come in line with the string the arm has closed this path off completely. Again, our shoulders are gonna be over our heels. So now we have a line to the target and this is now back here trying to make this triangle. Your clearance, your path of your string are completely cut off. This is a very dangerous position to put yourself in as a bow hunter shooting with bulky clothes because you're very likely to hit your sleeve, which is gonna create very poor arrow flight and it's doubtful that you're gonna hit your target. The other thing is as we close off our stance and this shoulder comes directly into the path of the string, it also gets to be at a position where it's very hard to keep it down. As we close our stance and your humerus starts to come up in your scapula, it's very, very likely that this scapula as you hold will continue to creep up like this. Whereas if your stance is correct, your front arm can remain down and forward. But as soon as you close your stance and you bring this shoulder in line with the string, the longer you hold, the more likely you are that this shoulder is gonna collapse into the shot. So if you struggle with your front shoulder collapsing, it may not even be the front shoulder's fault. It could easily be your stance. If you're very neutral or even closing it off, you're already putting yourself in a position where the shoulder is highly likely to collapse the longer you hold. Now the last stance is the ideal stance and essentially the stance that I want you to look for every single shot during week two. It's going to be what I refer to as a neutral stance, which has slight variation to it. The main thing is a neutral stance is at minimum perfectly parallel. 
but for me personally, I found that it's most comfortable when it is very slightly opened. So what I look for when I look down at my feet is I look for the ball of my front foot to be in line, or I'm sorry, the toe of my front foot to be in line with the ball of my rear foot. And in that position, it allows me to have perfect string clearance. And as I raise my bow to the target, it also lets me keep this front shoulder packed down so it doesn't creep up. So I look down at my feet, toe of my front foot in line with the ball of my rear foot. You'll notice that if you're looking at the wording on my shirt, you can tell a pretty good difference between this neutral stance versus an open stance versus a completely closed stance, okay? So you wanna look down at your feet every shot during week two. Ball of your, sorry, ball of your rear foot in line with the toe of your front foot. And in this position here, you're going to have a triangle that allows you perfect clearance with your string. It's gonna give you great arrow flight, allow you to keep your front shoulder packed down, and it's also going to put your rear elbow at about 11.30 if you were looking back at it on the clock. So as you pull through and that shot breaks, it's gonna break at about 12 o'clock and allow you to have good string clearance and proper follow through. Gets very difficult to do that properly when your stance is closed. And again, when you're open, the angle is very, very wrong. Now what I want you to do, and one of the things that I've done even at tournaments is either get some chalk and mark your feet down on the ground wherever you're shooting or take an old target just like this flip it over trace your feet on it in the correct position and go ahead and tape that target down on the floor or again mark your feet in the correct position. That way you get yourself in the habit of always returning to the exact position to where your stance is going to be the same each and every time. Again, week two, focusing on stance is the foundation for some of the form and building that we're gonna do in order to put you in correct posture down the road. So power of four, look at your feet.